Question three. On the June 2008 paper, mechanics. Let's have a look. We've got a particle of uh, mass, 0.4, it's moving under the action of a single constant force. Uh, the acceleration of that is this. Find the angle between the acceleration and I. So we're just looking at the acceleration vector, which is this one for the first. So let's just draw a little diagram. Maybe help us out, as usual in mechanics. So let's just draw, well, six in the positive horizontal direction and eight in the positive vertical direction it means we're going to go like this and then like this. So we're going to have a single vector which is the acceleration, it's that, so it's 6 across and 8 up, where this is a 90 degree angle here. So we want to find the angle it makes with the positive I. Well, positive I is along this direction, so we want to find out this angle in here. And actually, we don't need to do any calculations to do with 90 or 360 or 180 or 270, anything like that. So luckily for us, we know we can tell from our basic trigonometry that the tan of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the uh, adjacent TOA and then all we've got to do is to find theta it's just the inverse tan making sure our calculator is in degrees of 8 over 6 which comes out as 53.1301235 degrees but we're going to round that to three significant figures, which is 53.1 degrees, 3SF. And there's our answer. Okay, for part B, we're asked to find out the magnitude of force. So we've got something to do with force as a vector, and we've got the mass of the object, and we've got the acceleration of vector. So really, that this is Newton's second law, but with vectors. So the Vector F force is equal to the mass multiplied by that, which is just a number, multiplied by the acceleration, which is also a vector. So vector F is equal to um, mass times acceleration. So for us, F is equal to 0 0.4, and I'm going to use columns because I like columns for our vectors of 6, 8, which gives us 2.4 in the horizontal direction and 3.2 in the vertical direction. Okay. So that's the vector force. So if the particle of 0.4 was subject to this force, it would accelerate at this vector here, as related by this. But we're asked for the magnitude. Now the magnitude of the vector is really easy to find. So the magnitude of the vector f is just using Pythagoras' theorem. We're going to do 2.4 squared plus 3.2 squared and then we find out that that works out nicely as the magnitude is just 4 newtons. Perfect. Going to the next one. We're given now that this is a normal vector type of vector question, well almost, it contains some very important idea. So after t seconds, the velocity p is v given that when t is naught, v is given this vector. So its initial velocity, the velocity of p, at time t equals 0, is given by the column vector minus 9, 10. Now, this is often, the vector questions are often asked to do with final position. So we often use, and I'm going to write out in full, the vector's question often uses when it's talking about ships or footballs or particles or people or, or boats or whatever it is, usually it's final position is its initial position plus the change, which is normally velocity times time. But what we want to find out is, and then this is what we've got in this question, and look at the similarities between these. It's very important. The final velocity, we're not talking about positions here, we're talking about velocity, is equal to its initial velocity, not its initial position, this should have read position here, 
not its initial position, its initial velocity. Final velocity is equal to its initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now it's worth just dwelling on this a second. Its final position is where it starts plus its change of position multiplied by the time. So final position is where it starts plus the change of position, its velocity, times time. If we're looking at final velocity, we want to look at its initial velocity plus the change of velocity, which is acceleration, times by time. So the final where it ends up is where it starts plus how it changes over how long it changes for. So let's consider the second one, but we need to keep this one in mind here. So its final velocity is, um, if we consider its final velocity, if we call that the vector v, the final velocity is its initial velocity, which is ten. I'm sorry, nine minus ten, plus the time it's taken to travel, which we're told is five seconds up here, multiplied by its acceleration. Now we're told the acceleration for the first part of the question, which is the vector six a. So its final position is its sorry, its final velocity is its initial velocity plus the acceleration vector multiplied by time. This is why I use column vectors, because it's really easy. 9 plus 5 times 6, which gives us 39 in the i direction. And minus 10 plus 5 times 8, or 40 for the j, gives us plus 30. So if we now wanted to convert that into ij notation, 39i plus 30j meters per second, because we're dealing with a velocity here, not a position. And there we are. End of question.